for the introduction and uh, also a warm welcome from my side. Quite excited to be here on this stage and present this uh, gateway that I um, originally initiated this project. But we'll see, um, uh, we have quite a, a bit of team uh, now behind this project. So we are already quite a bit behind schedule. So I try to keep it short and concise. And um, uh, yeah, so just let's get started. Um, before I get into the details what the application gateway project exactly is, I want to quickly highlight um, what's the reason why we started developing uh, this gateway. So first of all, as a matter of fact, many organizations moved to microservice-based architectures. And this is true from large-scale companies like uh, banks or online banking, and also for more smaller, for example, um, new innovative project of startups. But when it comes to security, um, microservices tend to make it uh, harder compared to monolithic systems. The main reason is that we have more services, more interactions between those services, the attack surface is larger, and those are all security considerations that uh, one should do. Compared to a monolithic system where we might only have a, a much clearly smaller attack surface. Attack surface. However, security is, is still a bit afterthought in, in many organizations. And from my own experience, I can just tell if you try to patch security at the end onto a architecture, it is so much harder and more costly than when you start with the security mindset from the beginning. But however, there's still not so much talk about security when it comes to microservices. So this is one of the, of the main challenges when it comes to microservices. But there are also some other challenges, especially in, in larger systems. One is that OpenID Connect, which is today the standard protocol for uh, really for um, federated authentication, it's still quite complex. Um, it's much easier than, for example, other protocols like SAML, but still there are a lot of different flows and you need to know what, what you do. And this can get quite tricky. And it's not really something that, um, that uh, is, is really um, part of your app. You want to focus on your business logic and not really on the authentication part. And then when it comes to large systems, then you often see that those microservice architectures are really closely coupled to uh, the, the way you authenticate uh, your users. And uh, from an architectural point of view, this is really unfortunate because you have this, um, this bit, uh, this, this really tight coupling. And if you want to change something on your authentication system, then you really need to change a lot on your backend. And, and this makes it hard to, to keep up this to modern with modern authentication so the OWASP application gateway project was initiated due to those uh, challenges and uh, yeah i'll come to in a minute to um, what what it exactly is but before that maybe a short view on the team behind it um, we have a, a few open source contributors and uh, the lead of the project is a, is a co-lead between patrick stegel who is a principal security architect also at Zulke Engineering and my humble self, who I am a security engineer and security tester also at Zulke. And yeah, by the way, we're also hiring. So if this is something who interests you, then uh, yeah, just uh, write me a note. So what are those challenges with those microservices? Um, here we have a sample microservice architecture. And this is really a typical architecture um, as you might see, there are browser client, the mobile app, then there are some services uh, which are exposed to the internet and the reporting service who is uh, not really uh, needed to be reachable from the internet. So I just wrote here a, a lot of different questions that might come up, but they often um, quite um, just just simplify to the main questions how can we integrate authentication uh, in this system because we have a lot of different uh, needs for example these services are most of the time implemented in a stateless way so we want to keep that stateless um, however we still might want a, a server-side logout and other security considerations 
And on the left side with the clients, we have the challenges that the browser has way less of possibilities to safely store a credential than, for example, a mobile app where you can store a long-term credentials um, in, for example, the iOS keychain. And uh, there you want really to have a long-term login and don't want the user to log in every time when he opens the app. So this is about the authentication. And then you so often have an external identity provider. This guy might be, for example, uh, a social login. This might be your own ERM system. This might be your Azure Active Directory, um, whatever it is. Uh, main question is always, how can we integrate this identity provider to uh, this architecture? And this is now where the OWASP application gateway comes into place. So what is it? The gateway itself, it's, it's a standalone application and it's a reverse proxy that sits between your web application or your clients and your backend services. So it's a typical HTTP reverse proxy, but compared to, for example, API gateways, as you might know it, um, there are a lot of products it has some some kind of special features and is focused on a we we talk, we um, call it application gateway and not API gateway because it does quite a lot of things for you. Uh, first of all, it does session management and uh, login with with a federated authentication provider. So it implements OpenID Connect and uh, takes kind of this this uh, responsibility, so you don't need to do that on your own. Um, so the idea is really that it gives you a head start when when try or when setting up your uh, security architecture, which which leads to a really um, secure architecture, uh, which is ready for from large uh, from small to large scale systems like like for example online banking systems. Because we believe that, that every application, also small applications, deserve uh, good security. And from an architectural point of view, the most important feature is that it decouples your uh, backend service from your single sign-on integration. Uh, because this was the point that I mentioned before, that we have this tight coupling often between the backend services and UEM, and Gateway is kind of a, a thing between and can uh, make that uh, or decouple that. So if you would want to use uh, the Gateway in your architecture, of course, there are some advantages and some disadvantages, with every, like with every architectural decision. Um, on the advantage side, we have uh, clearly that it comes with a lot of out-of-the-box functionality when it comes to session management and uh, login. So you really need to write almost no code in the backend nor in the frontend uh, to do any kind of uh, login-related stuff. So it uh, in, a, in a large extent, it reduces the complexity in the frontend and backend, and you can really focus only on, on the business logic. From a security perspective, it's also a, uh, a single point of entry, which uh, means that you have a clearly defined attack surface. And it also makes it uh, much easier to, for example, implement trust zones with network policies because you only uh, need to expose your instance of the gateway. Then also from, from a developer perspective uh, or from an architectural perspective again, uh, the API is the contract, so uh, it allows you to make changes in the backend without uh, changing anything in the, in the front end. Uh, this is a clear advantage. Um, this pattern is also called backend for front end, um, if you want to. And of course, it comes with a lot of best practices when it comes to security. So, it, for example, it implements request tracing according to uh, W3C standards. It has a uh, it locks um, all requests that, that it uh, forwards. It comes with CSERF protection. You can modify headers and so on and so forth. But also, of course, there's some uh, slight disadvantages. First of all, it's like that's the most important one. It, it's obviously a, a bit more complex architecture. Uh, but on the other hand, you have a bit less complexity in the front end and back end. So this is kind of a trade-off you need to do. Um, 
And then also because it's a single point of entry, it's also a single point of failure. Uh, we will uh, cover later how, how we address this problem with horizontal scalability. And then of course, um, while the OHE is, is really uh, configurable, um, it's still opinionated in some areas. So we have a kind of idea how, how an our architecture vision uh, with the zero trust approach. Um, but um, if, if your vision doesn't match that at all, then the OHG might be not a good fit for you. So um, this is now really theoretical. <laughs> Um, I'll do now a short demo uh, of an application that is implemented with the gateway. Um, you see here the architecture. So this is all deployed on Azure, but this doesn't really matter for the demo. Uh, the only thing the client talks to is the gateway itself. And then we have three backend systems. First is a, uh, a host for the front end. This is a simple Azure blob storage. And then we have two Azure app services, one for the backend API, and one uh, is a special echo uh, service that is just here for debugging and, uh, and demonstration purposes. But before I show you that, I want to quickly show you how this is now configured because this gives a very good impression um, how, how uh, OHE works. So let me quickly uh, change the, the window. Then I need to stop the share and do it again. Um, so what you see now is the, uh, the configuration file of this OHE instance. And you can see it's a YAML file, so it's easily human readable. And this is also the idea that you can read this file and you directly get the impression what is going on. There are two main parts. Um, there are routes definitions. Um, so here you add the different backend routes and uh, you can have a, 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 a pattern that, that matches the request and then it gets re forwarded uh, to this request. And you can have, uh, for example, additional settings like if uh, the, this route can be uh, accessed in an anonymous way. So this is the first important part. Second important part is here the login providers. Here you tell um, the, the gateway how exactly users can log in. And um, we have also three methods here. So the first one is a login with Google. Um, this is a simple OpenID Connect login. And those here are the values that I got uh, from Google when registering this uh, login with Google. And then we also have a login with GitHub. GitHub doesn't implement OpenID Connect. Uh, this is kind of uh, unfortunate. Uh, they have their own protocol. So we also uh, build that directly natively into the application gateway. And just for demo purposes, we also have a third um, with a private ERM. There are a lot of uh, additional things you can configure. Uh, for example, how this chat token looks like that is sent to the backend. Uh, but this is optional, so you don't really need to configure that uh, if you just want to take the out-of-the-box version. Um, so now let's go to my browser window. And um, then I can show you how this looks like. Um, so this is the URL of, of the demo, oheg.azurewebsites.net. Uh, feel free to also go here. Um, it's a simple blocking application. Currently, we don't have any uh, articles here. If you want to uh, create one, uh, let's sign up for that. Um, and here you see now these three uh, login uh, links. This now uh, needs to be, of course, implemented by a front-end developer um, because we don't really know <laughs> uh, how you want your login page to look like. But uh, when I click here on the button, uh, this is a simple redirect to a special URL. And this is called auth Google uh, login, for example. And if you redirect the user to that URL, OHG knows that you want to log, or that the user wants to log in with Google. So let's do that. And then we start the OpenID Connect flow. I'm already logged in at Google, so uh, there's no password prompt, but I can now select my account. Let's take my OWASP account. I get redirected back to my OHG instance, and then you can see I'm logged in. Um, also, uh, I have my nice little profile picture. If you want 
to know what's going on on the back end, you can now use the special echo route. Uh, what this service does, it just reflects the HTTP request uh, as it gets it. Um, then you can see what uh, the gateway does. Uh, what's interesting is most of all this authorization barrel header. This is now added by the gateway. And here we have a JOT token that can be uh, validated by the backend in a stateless way. And if we take a closer look, we see here now um, that we have the information, for example, which provider did the user uh, use and um, also, for example, uh, here the subject claim, which tells uh, the backend uh, unique ID of the user. Uh, there are a lot more things that you can configure. Um, also, for example, you have a session ID directly in this uh, job token. This is the session ID we have here with our cookie-based authentication. Um, if we take a closer look at that, um, we can see here that we have a few cookies set. Uh, most important here, the session cookie. Um, this is a uh, encrypted cookie. So, um, uh, but this is kind of not your business. This is uh, OAG internally. So there are also a few other things. For example, uh, here the trace parent header. This is uh, an ID which is generated by OAG itself. Uh, and is used with every lock statement about this request so, and then forwarded to the backend. So if you also lock this ID, then you can really achieve a, a nice cross-service lock coloration. And especially for larger systems or in larger systems, this gets really important if you run into issues and uh, need to debug something. So that was it for the demo. Feel free to check it out by yourself. Um, I'll go back to the presentations. And uh, I think because um, we started a bit late, I'll need to uh, jump over a few slides. Um, but what I wanted to, to show you is here this, uh, this overview over the design principles be behind the OWASP application gateway. This is kind of from a user perspective, what's important for them. So the first, and in my opinion, most important one is that it's secure by default. This means the default settings, default functionalities and so on are built in a way that they are kind of follow current best practices and lead you as a user to a kind of zero trust architecture, which we think will be a good fit for the future. It also means that if we add a new feature, we try to design the feature in a way that is uh, hard to misuse, but this sounds really easy, but it's actually quite complicated. Uh, it also means that we are the, the gateway itself is kind of opinionated in some areas, uh, but we know, of course, that uh, there are always special considerations, especially when it comes to larger systems. Uh, then it's really important for you that it's built to be extended. Uh, the gateway itself is, is based on a Java Spring stack. So you can uh, add your own beans if you want and uh, add your own functionality and whatever you want. For example, if you want to, to change the logging system, you can do that. If you want to add support for new authentication provide methods, something else than OpenID Connect or GitHub, you can do that. Um, that's, that's very simple. I think really important for, for larger systems. And the last uh, design principles be behind the gateway is um, that um, that it's it's really configuration based or that the whole configuration is based in, in this one file I showed you. Uh, this is important because it allows you to just take a look at this configuration file and you know what's going on. So there's no login where you can uh, log yourself in and for example, add routes in a, in a graphical way. Uh, we believe that this, this file-based configuration is, is much better for transparency. And also allows you, for example, to add this file to a uh, Git repo, and then, for example, automatically deploy it via CICD. And I think this is a really good way to um, avoid misconfiguration vulnerabilities uh, because the, the changes are really transparent. Um, so uh, we have five more minutes. So um, just 
very briefly to mention, uh, internally, we have a non-blocking network stack. This is important for uh, when you have a lot of concurrent requests. Uh, we didn't implement it by ourselves. This is based by on, on Spring Cloud Gateway, um, which is really a major a module, um, a module uh, gateway product that provides this HTTP forwarding functionality. And we have a stateless architecture uh, wherever it works. Uh, there are a few areas like server side lockouts there so that we need, still need a, a little bit of state between different nodes, but we keep that, uh, we try to keep that minimal, uh, but that's uh, one topic we really are working on right now. If you would want to use it, there are two uh, usage models. The first is that you run it out, out of the box. And I think for small to medium-sized project, this is totally fine. Uh, then you just can run the docu image, or there's also a Java char release if you want to use that. Uh, then you just need to tell uh, the gateway um, where to find the configuration file, and it will start up. If you want to extend, uh, you need to use Java and Spring Boot. Uh, then you can create your own uh, project and uh, use this, this annotation enable of us application gateway and uh, then directly add your own functionality, add your own Spring filters, can add your own Spring Beans and whatever you want. About the current state, um, it's still work in progress, need to say that, uh, but we expect to, to deliver a first um, a productive usable version as soon as we have built this, this clustering mechanism. Um, the latest version, it contains all the features that I presented right now in this abstract, um, except of, of this cluster support I mentioned. So if you want to try it out, feel free, uh, pull it from Docker Hub or, the, or check out the GitHub page. Um, also, if you want to find out more, um, check out our GitHub page. There we have a lot of code samples, documentation, uh, even documentation how to extend it and so on, and how to integrate it. Um, please also start it on GitHub. That's uh, something who, which really helps us to get some uh, more visibil visibility. And also can check out the OVAS website. Uh, there, there's also some additional information about the project. Um, at that, uh, Point I also want to mention, we're always looking for contributors. Uh, that doesn't only need to be a uh, coding. Um, you can also just write us a note, what you like, maybe feedback, maybe ideas, what, what feature you would expect from such a uh, gateway. Uh, and if you want to code, uh, feel free. We are always happy if we have new uh, open source contributors. Sometimes we also have, uh, or even though, even uh, if it's just a little thing, but that re that's really exciting. If someone um, develops something, that's a feature. Uh, so please, if you have questions about the, the development, uh, please don't hesitate to contact one of uh, the project leaders, so either me or Poddy. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'll hang around in the Slack for questions. Um, feel free to join, and uh, yeah, we'll be happy to to answer some questions. Uh